In today's News Daily video, we have some positive contract news surrounding two of our centre backs. And to end with things, I'm going to discuss the big latest news surrounding Roman Abramovich's fascination in having Eden Hazard returning back to the club. Could it happen? And most importantly, should it happen? So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Before I continue on, one quick plug out the way first. Still struggling for Christmas gift ideas? Don't worry you guys, I got you covered, I'm your guy. Of course, use my discount code NINI10 to get 10% off your final order. And at the same time, the club have their own personal discount code where if you spend over £65, you can get 20% off all your final orders using the relevant codes, which will be linked below in the description. So I got you covered this Christmas <laughs> without wasting any more time. We start with the first story and Christensen and Thiago Silva have agreed to extend their deals at Chelsea Football Club. Now, the reality is, is that they haven't right now at this point in time put their signatures to that contractual paper, but they have agreed and committed their futures to this club. And for me, that's great news. Uh, in the case of Thiago Silva, he's had another one year extension clause activated. He wants to remain here. And this means that he will be playing until 2023. I mean, the guy looks like he's at least 23 years old. I'm sure he can play until he's 40. I think Thiago Silva can play until he actually feels like he's bored of playing football, which would be a long way away. So for me personally, that's great news. World-class player, amazing experience to have here as well. And of course, um, yeah, just an all-around great pro. Moving on to Andreas Christensen. This is where things get more interesting because it seems like Christensen's agent has finally secured the best financial package for his client. Of course, over the past few weeks, there's been talks of the contract length being the, you know, the main stumbling block when it comes to Christensen committing to this new deal. The final news that I'm hearing, you guys, is that the proposed five-year contract offer from the club they did not want. Uh, originally, they wanted a three-year contract, with, which was just like too short for the club to commit to. So the workaround is that Christensen will sign a four-year contract, but there will be a clause in that contract allowing for a further contract extension by one more year. So I think that's the best possible situation for everyone. That's two out of four defenders secured now. Are we going to see Aspen Aquesta committing here? And at the same time, is there still time to get Rudiger to commit his future here? I, I think these are questions for other videos for other days. So right now, you guys, we move on to the final big story today. And it's time we talk about Eden Hazard. Now we've been seeing these Hazard rumours continuously coming up and popping up time and time again. Could there be something tangible and real here? Well, at this point in time, I'm not too sure, but I'm kind of feeling like Hazard now is really a possibility as long as the financials make some sense. But regardless, you guys, let's focus on the latest news report coming out from Spanish media outlet Super Deporte, where they discuss Hazard's hazardous time at Real Madrid and Madrid's having a hazardous headache when it comes to getting Hazard off their wage bill. I mean, he's on about 17 million per season and unfortunately Hazard's not really been able to show the best of his abilities due to injuries that are consuming his game. Since signing for Real Madrid, he's had 11 different injuries. He's also picked up COVID as well too. Um, it's not the same Eden Hazard that we used to remember or know him for, but regardless you guys, let's focus more on the story. And that story is, is that, you know, Madrid, they've got plans for the summer. Mbappe, Haaland, Rudiger, big money signings. They need to free up space in the wage bill. And Hazard's 400k per week deal is something that has to be rectified considering that he is not living up to that wages at this point in time. This season, he's only played 400 minutes under Carlo Ancelotti. Recently, West Ham had a 25 million public offer made for the player, which was just immediately turned down by Real Madrid from Perez. And the minimum asking price that they want to release Hazard would be around 50 million euros. Now, here's where the reports get quite interesting because now they're stating that Roman Abramovich is still interested in bringing Hazard back to Stamford Bridge. And in Madrid, they know that Hazard would most definitely return back in a heartbeat because Hazard's only leaving Real Madrid for another top club. That means that he's not going to leave Real Madrid to go to your West Ham's or your Tottenham's or any of those clubs. However, Super Deporte do report that there is one issue behind making this deal happen, and that's involving Rudiger and his potentially imminent free transfer move to Real Madrid this summer. They report that Real Madrid is not happy with Real Madrid and he's not happy with Rudiger as well. In the case of Rudiger, he feels like, you know, you're picking money over the potential, over the greatness of this team right now. And that's partially frustrating him. And I guess he's also directing that frustration towards Real Madrid. So they report that 
any offer we make for Hazard is going to be way below the 50 million valuation that Madrid want for him, which makes things very interesting because Madrid have to sell Hazard to free up that space, which tells me that they could be forced to make some big financial sacrifices for the following summer. Of course, right now, you guys, you know I have to give my thoughts and opinions behind the story. The report stating that Roman is displeased with Rudiger picking money over the club's projects. Um, I don't know how to feel about that personally. Um, I don't know. Part of me is just feeling Rudiger's asking for 10 mil per season. Yeah, it's a bit of money, but he's kind of proven himself to be one of the top defenders in Europe. And when guys like Marcos Alonso are earning more than him on 150K per week, I don't know that, what that's really telling me, to be honest, but I don't want to talk about that, you guys. Let's talk about Eden Hazard. Hazard returning back. Are we saying no? I mean, justifiably, Hazard just isn't getting those minutes this season. Vinicius Jr., his partnership alongside Karim Benzema is one of the best partnerships in Europe currently. They're both on double digits for goals and assists. 10 goals plus apiece them. Uh, unreal form down that left-hand side. But one of the reasons behind why Vinicius is also playing on the left is that he does also offer greater defensive support off the ball. Carlo needs both his wingers to drag back to help out the fullbacks. You know, if you're not going to do that, you're not going to be playing in the team. And I think one thing we know about Eden Hazard is that that type of work rate has just never been part of his game. So immediately it gets me thinking, how would Hazard work in this current Tuchel setup? You know, with Tuchel, we understand that every single player must put in that same defensive work rate as each other. That's how the system works. You know, the second you sign Eden Hazard, you're kind of implying that you have to now build a team around him and of course make excuses and allowances. And is that going to help the full strength of the entire team to cater to one player that who might not necessarily be that same player that we used to remember him by? That Hazard that was explosive when it came to accelerating away in those first few meters. That Eden Hazard that was amazing at receiving on the half turn in any area any position on the field, you could take out two, three men, that's not the same player anymore. His dribbling stats have gone down so much now that since he signed for Real Madrid. But of course, he still has that creativity. He still plays in those key passes every game. And I guess I could see him translate that creativity, which you don't really lose if he was to come here and was playing between the lines for us. But at the same time though, this is a hazard that has suffered with injuries after injuries after injuries. A part of me does feel like maybe we have some blame to, to play in this matter because when he was playing for us, it did feel like most of the system and tactics catered towards his individual brilliance compared to a system that got the best out of every single player. And every week he was getting kicked, he was getting hacked, ankles, uh, Achilles, his feet, time and time and time again. And when a player is suffering these injuries at the same time of not being super diligent when it comes to looking after his body, his physiology, his diet, you know, his, his preparation, then you can imagine that that longevity in your career is definitely going to die down. I mean, we've all heard the stories, you know, he's come back to pre-season time and time again being overweight, but, you know, at the time, he just kind of just allowed it because, you know, Hazard isn't one of those classical pros like uh, uh, Ronaldo, for example. He's one of those players that literally plays football for the fun. The way he played football is how he'd play football if he wasn't in the stadium, if he was in a five-a-side pitch, if he was in the park with his boys as well. And I think that's one of the things that we love about him. I mean, in these past five games, Hazard Hazard hasn't played once at all and his minutes are dramatically reduced. I mean it hurts because we remember Eden Hazard, we, we remember what he was doing for us. So for me to say that I think this would not be the right move, it's not easy for me to say this. You know, I want to end this on a more optimistic note though. I'm always going to believe in people, you know, Hazard's showing that he's looking to try and get his form back. He's still liaising with even, uh, you know, club medical doctors at this club as well too and looking to really get his body on point now. Let's hope there's still time left. And for me, I think if anything even happened for Hazard, it could not be on a permanent transfer move. It would have to be like what we've done for Saul, Cover and many other players, it would have to be a loan move first. That is the only way to make sure that we don't face any financial burdens in the future and personally I think many clubs don't have the money or funds to even cater to Hazard's wages or give the money that Madrid would want for him considering the injuries he's had these past two seasons so for me I need to see how he does this entire season if he can maintain some fitness if he can show us some form in the second half of the season as well too then this discussion is open again and everything becomes completely different but right now at this point in time I think Hazard will not be the right move personally and 
you know, it makes me sad to say it, you guys. So on that note, of course, you guys leave your thoughts and opinions below. How do you feel about a potential hazard return? What type of stipulations would you have to see first before even entertaining it? Or if you're entertaining it already, tell us your reasons right now. And on that note, I'm in EFC. This is Blue Line TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.